of the matter is, is that we've really not even begun being the ecclesia in the earth. You know, that was something that the apostles had done. And uh, at that began to fade up into, uh, into the 300s and then from 300 to 600. And then we entered the dark ages and, you know, it just was dark, you know. But, um, but here we are. We're reflecting back on their example, and we are beginning to demonstrate more so. And the thing is, is we're, we've, got to, uh, we've got to scoot on our elbows a little bit before we learn to crawl. And then we've got to learn to <laughs> crawl before we can learn to walk. And then we've got to learn to walk before we can run. But we are in the best place that we could be, and that's right here. Because we're not at the very beginning, but we're still not at the end either. So as you're beginning to exercise decrees and declarations and using your governmental uh, establishment in, in, your, in the kingdom of God for your territory, I want to talk about these two elements. And so we're going to employ the law of opposites. Um, this is in uh, one of the books. I can't remember. I'm sorry. But the law of opposites, basically, okay, so when you're doing inner healing and deliverance and somebody has been dealing with rejection their whole life, you begin to speak acceptance. And you talk about scriptures of acceptance and identifiers and your identity and, and belonging and things like that. So you begin to speak to the opposite of rejection. You've, there's that belonging and sense of family and restoring the... Um, through discipleship, relational aspects of belonging, instilling safety and security, okay? If you have <coughs> um, jealousy, you know, you can begin to say you are satisfied. You are content with who God has made you to do. You're not in competition. We come against competition, break off, you know. And, and so you begin to call out things that would, um, that would, come against the fruits of the spirit okay so you need love we need long suffering we need patience joy uh, peace gentleness kindness you know so and there are many other attributes that just insert here because whatever you have uh, experienced or you're going through that uh, that has caused you to be bound or put you in some form of captivity spiritually, you can em employ the law of opposites. And those opposites are going to look like the fruits of the Spirit. They're going to look like the spirits of the Lord. They're going to they're gonna look like the redemptive gifts and, and calling forth your identity and setting, establishing it and speaking about your strengths. And you can qualify those because the Lord says you're beautifully and wonderfully made. And he desires good gifts for his children. So he's not going to hand you a snake when you want a bunny. You know, he loves you. And so how we do this, it, we call this adjudicating. And uh, Kim was actually talking about that in, in the hammer of Hammond. And there's a judicial piece there. And so as you employ the hammer for Hammond, to adjudicate on behalf of Hammond that it's going to be something that it has not been. It, and you're going to start calling those things as though they are, and you're going to uh, bind and loose. Because, see, you know, once a judgment has been made, you receive a sentence, and that, and that sentence is carried out. You're either free, you're either made free, or you're bound. But binding is is also like em empowering and making stronger, right? And uh, so you can look at binding either way. You can look at it in a negative connotation or you can use it in a positive connotation. It doesn't matter. Just apply it the way it needs to be applied to establish what God's heart is for the land. So whatever the fruits are on the other side of this board, you would just apply the law of opposite opposites and bind those things. We uh, bind life in Jesus' name. 
Every time I hear 20 and think of the 20 acres, I, th I think life. The 20 represents life. So, you know, sp speak and declare, bind life to it, and um, loose life, empower it to exercise life, and life more abundantly. And you can bring your life scriptures to the forefront and begin uh, applying the law of opposites through judication. And then when you're done, you just say, by the authority vested in me through Christ Jesus and the Holy Spirit, you know, to done, all right? Then, through your decrees and declarations, we decree as a body of God, this is more to do corporately, because you need, a, a, when you begin to decree a thing, you are setting into motion God's law, and you're overturning the corruption. You're overturning the previous government, okay? And so you, in order to do that, you need an assembly to come together, and you, you need a scribe to begin to write what you're decreeing and declaring. So if you've adjudicated the law of opposites, you can take those things and say, now, in accordance with what has been decided in the courts of heaven, we legislate as the ecclesia that we agree with this law and therefore this territory is going to operate under the power and authority of Christ Jesus. Therefore, we decree there will no longer be blood sacrifices. We decree and declare there will no longer be corruption in the pulpit. We decree and declare that, that, that churches will live by righteousness and holiness. You see? And so you take the principles that the government of God says, hey, this is what my kingdom looks like. And if you have any questions about what that should look like, you know, you can go to uh, the, <clears throat> the law back in the Old Testament, or you can even look, especially when you're applying it to churches. Um, I think this group had the churches, right? So I immediately thought of Revelation 2, 3, 4. Is 5 part of that too? I think, it were, I think it goes all the way up to Revelation 5. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just 2 and 3. Is it two and three? Yes. Well, Sardis and Ephesus, they didn't have any, there was no complaint against them, right? There were, well, yeah, there were, I'm just talking about the books. The books of Revelation. So it begins in, I'm almost positive, book two. And, and so you've got the seven churches across a couple of chapters, okay? And God edifies them. He talks about what they're doing right. So you can begin to declare and decree the right things. Ephesus and Sardis didn't have any objection by God. They were, you know, because it was the martyrs and those that were, those that were going to be persecuted, I think, you know. So anyway, um, so you can begin to declare and decree what, what is right according to God, and then you can go ahead and the things that he named, and I'm pretty sure he mentions Jezebel in there, John did, and, and, and so we're not going to tolerate Jezebel in our churches anymore. And we're not going to, blah, blah. so you can say what you can do and what you can't do. You also uh, write in your legislation definitions according to the scripture of Revelation 2, the, the, the verse thus and such, we, as the ecclesia, come into agreement with this scripture by defining this as yada yada, okay? So you're going to write it like a law, and you're going to decree and declare it, and you're going to say it out loud with the confession of your mouth, and then if you want to, you can even sign it and put it with your historian, to keep track. You know what? We did this on this date. And so when something happens on your land that is not in agreement with this or this, let me pull up your, look here. Do you remember this, God? Were you there? I, you were there. I know you were there. Do you remember when we, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm bringing you into remembrance of this, that we have a violation in our land and we're policing the land and the territory, and we're saying, uh-uh, this is not going to be tolerated. 
And so, Lord, dispatch the heavenly host to help us man this territory. You're going to go wherever the defilement is from these places. Okay, it, once this has been established, if there's a point of defilement, so you've got to be listening. You've got to be watching, waiting, not, not for something to happen, but you're kind of policing the territory. You're being deputized as sheriffs, rangers, rangers in the land, okay? And so you are defending God's constitution, his law, by his grace. And so when something happens, you've, you've got to bring it into the Lord's remembrance so that the, the violators, God can handle the violators. Then you go where the transgression was made. You handle it just like you handled this. And then go home and eat cake. Because the victory is yours. This is your land. This is your land. You have earned it. You have worked hard for it. You are stewarding it, and you should reap the rewards of it. And you will begin to see the effects of your labor in the land and around you, in your businesses. Neighborhoods will start to come up. More econ economic growth will come in, and, and you'll see righteousness being restored. Okay? This is reality. This that I'm saying to you is reality. What was no longer is because you're not going to allow it anymore. You need to identify where your occultic structures are and you need to come together once a week in covenant with one another and pray those things powerless. Not giving them any authority, not giving them any room to do anything at any time until they leave. You don't have to show up on their doorstep. You can just dispatch angelic hosts and they'll just escort them right on out of town. Just know that they're not going into Mississippi. <laughs> so, I just wanted to share that with you because as, as we're talking about the ecclesia, it's just bringing a little bit more layering to the work that you're doing and understanding how this operates and, and how to function in this. And it's okay if you stumble a little bit. Lord, he realizes we're new at this, right? And there's a grace for that. Just repent and move on. Just say, Lord, I, I think I messed that up. And if, if I got any of the terminology wrong or if I got too excited in my own zeal, Lord, just cover it in the blood of Jesus, okay? He's not nearly as legalistic as, as Satan, <laughs> okay? All right. Well, I bless you. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you so much for allowing us to do what we've been destined to do.